Um, look, this is a partnership of, you know, not just Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, but many national laboratories, you know, academia, industry, and the international community. And I think it's a testimony to what this conference stands for. You know, it really is just an incredible, uh, you know, exciting field to be a part of and what we've done, you know, with the people, many of them in this room, over 3,000 vendors, 800 in this industry alone, has just, uh, has just truly been inspiring uh, to me to be a part of it. And if you look in the United States, which is not all the places, we've bought around $2 billion in equipment in 49 out of 50 states. Unfortunately, North Dakota, we had a company, but they went out of business before they delivered. I, you know, I'm from New York City, and when I got to LA, you know, the first person I met was from North Dakota. And uh, he was the first NODAC I ever met, and he pretended I was the first New Yorker he ever met, but I didn't believe him. Okay, look, NIF is ready for ignition experiments. We've, we've shown the capability to do actually over two megajoules capability. Um, we have the balance level, the pointing, the timing, and we're ready to go. What is our strategy? Our strategy to do is to do ignition. It's really important that we do that. That is the sin qua non of all of the things we do, but then to go on to a user facility. We have something called the National Ignition Campaign. Our goal is to execute, in actually the next 18 months, our first serious implosion experiments. Remember the idea here is not explosion, it's implosion. You know, can you put these targets, these very small targets together into this very bizarre conditions? But also our goal is to move to have NIF a co international user community. Here's what a target looks like. I'm gonna just give you a little tutorial on this. You know, you have that hole rom or that gold capsule, which is just the black body. You have these 96 laser beams coming in from top and bottom, you know, through something called uh, the laser entrance hole, since we're not very clever in what else, and how we call things. And you have this little ball that's around two millimeters in diameter. It could be plastic, it could be beryllium, it could be diamond, or when we're in Congress, we call it high density carbon. I'm not making a joke, but one time we talked about, you know, we have gold hull roms and diamond capsules. They, they were, they got nervous. So we, <laughs> so anyway, if you look at the capsule, it's an ablator, it's a, you know, the, the capsule has an ablator, and then it has a very thin layer of ice, which is around 75 microns. It's not really ice, it's frozen DT. And it's a, um, it's a millimeter radius. And what you do is this, and you watch this over time, you see the blader is in gray and the ice is in blue. And for the longest time, not much is happening. What you're really doing is launching shocks. The blader is ablating, it's launching shocks and watch what happens to the ice right now. It starts thinning up, if you can see it. It's getting very dense, We're trying to keep it below 10,000 degrees. And then the last pulse, we blow it in. This is now moving a million miles an hour. Okay, so let me, let me just show that again. Let's see if I can. Okay, so just watch it. Where the laser light is hitting the ablator, it's ablating, right? And it's, and it's set in very specific synchrony so that we have low, a low adiabat or not much entropy. And you can watch it's burning off and now it's starting to shock and thin up the ice or the DT and when it gets really thin, around 10 microns thick, we just blow it in, okay? That's the game. Other ways of saying it, if you're a fusion guy, this is called the Lawson criterion, right? This is, there's two things, and again, I'm sorry about these view graphs, I didn't realize the size of the room. The, the y-axis is the average uh, um, temperature, and the <coughs> x-axis is the density of the, uh, of the particles. The, the rho r, or the density, is how much energy you have, you need, and the vertical axis is how much power you have. Right now, we're, you know, omega is in that lower left-hand corner, and we have to get it all the way up there. That's a, that's a lot of physics between those two places. And what we have to do, and I don't have time to go over this, but, you know, you have to maintain a very low entropy, a very high velocity, 
and then you have to keep it hydrodynamically stable. You know, for those of you who have spent time with laser plasma physics, these are all, these are all very hard things to do. So get all these things simultaneously is the trick. You can get any one or two, maybe even three of them at once, but four of them is the hard part. We have a series of experiments that are actually going to be starting this summer um, that, to make this all uh, real. And so we will be reporting a lot about this in the, in the in next year and a half. And we're kind of excited about how, how we'll tune up the laser, the hull ROMs, the capsules. Then we'll do the tritium laser and then we'll do DT burn. And over the next uh, three years, we intend to really develop a stable burning platform. That is our goal. This will be the first time, if it works, um, that there will be a burning platform with gain. You know, there, this is not the first fusion neutrons by any sense of the word. You know, fusion neutrons have been, were demonstrated, well, you know, go back into the 30s. But, you know, and, uh, but in the laser programs and the MFE program also, you know, for many, many uh, decades. The question is, can you get gain, which is a self-propagating burn, a self-sustaining burn? And this will be the first time that there has been any capability to do that in any kind of system. And that's what we're going to be looking at. And the, and the, the issue here is, you know, yield, and again, on the y-axis, versus laser energy, you can see, I think, I, I don't like to use laser pointers, but I'll just do this one over here if you look to my right, stage right. This is where we're going to be starting. You know, this is laser energy about 1 to 1.2 megajoules and gains of around 10, and yields of around 10 megajoules. So gains of around 10, 10 times more energy out than laser energy in. But you can see NIF as a green machine can go up to, and we have shown this, can go up to around three and a half megajoules, not 1.8 megajoules. And you could have 300 megajoules of yield at that point. You know, just to go over it, if you do think about power plants, you know, if you have a 10 hertz machine, not a 10 to the minus four hertz or 10 to the minus five hertz, you know, 300 megajoules is three gigawatts, right? Three gigawatts, 40% thermal, you know, let, electrical, you have a gigawatt plant. That's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. You know, could you do those kind of things? We have ideas how to get around that, but that's what we're talking about. That just gives the scale of megajoules. Now, there's other ideas of using fast ignition, which you might have heard about, is to use fast pulses. Right now, indirect drive that I've been talking about is a diesel engine. You, you, know, you just squash it and squash it and squash it until it lights off. You know, you don't have a spark plug, but there's ideas using short pulse lasers, pico, picosecond lasers, that can have a spark plug effect. And you, you, know, you can squash it not as hard and then put this very fast pulse of light in, you know, very low energy relatively, tens or 20 or up to 100 kilojoules of picosecond light. I, I know that's a big number, uh, but not uh, insurmountable. And get a spark plug to go. And we have... The NIF has that capability too. This is a um, petawatt capability that's being installed on the NIF literally as we speak. And, uh, and we call it an advanced rated graphic capability because it does two things. It allows us to look through these incredibly thick targets. You know, uh, if you're looking at, at something that's 100 times the density of lead and you want to take a picture of what's going on in it, you know, we have to get high energy x-rays. Uh, so we're using K-alpha radiation to do that. And that's going in, but you can also do fast ignition experiments. And here's some of the um, beautiful gratings technology that we've developed in our, sh our sharing at the world. We have gold gratings that I'm showing here that have been just shipped off to Rutherford recently. But we also have dielectric gratings that, uh, <clears throat> that are, you know, can take four joules per square centimeter, which is also a very interesting number. So what's the NIF master strategy? You know, we do ignition get a user facility. I want to talk about two things now, which I, are dear, near and dear to my heart. I think that achieving ignition at the NIF can be a defining moment for the world's energy future. That's a big statement, I know, and maybe bring a lot of doubt and skepticism into your mind, but hopefully not cynicism. I, I'm going to talk about something called uh, laser inertial fusion 
energy, and we think it's a compelling approach to carbon-free baseload power.